Buenas noches, bienvenidos. Estrenamos hoy Confidencial S.A., un programa para la noche del lunes. Tras la desaparición de Madeleine McCann, unos abuelos destrozados. Jerry called me. He said, um, there's been a disaster. It's a disaster. And I thought there'd been a car accident. La desesperación de los primeros momentos. But I've never heard Kate raise her voice. She doesn't raise her voice. And she was shouting down the phone, I think, oh, to emphasize how important it was um, to the British consul. I want somebody here now. Su sufrimiento. Sus recuerdos del pasado. Su hija a punto de perder la razón. Kate visualizes Madeline coming down the stairs in the house. I can see it coming down the stairs, Mom. Esta noche Brian y Susan Helly abren las puertas de su casa y de su corazón a nuestras cámaras. We love you, Madeline. No solo el párroco de Praia de Luz ha hablado con nosotros. Confidencial S.A. ha sido testigo de las primeras declaraciones ofrecidas por los abuelos maternos de Madeleine a un medio de comunicación español. Desolados, Brian y Susan Helly han recordado los duros momentos vividos aquella trágica noche del 3 de mayo. Vale. It's a disaster. Uh, Kate phoned me um, about an hour after Jerry and asked me to get in touch with um, Paul Seddon, who is the priest, Father Seddon, who married her, who baptized Madeline. Kate and Jerry were not the most devout family. We do have Catholic faith. Um, it, it's the religion that we were brought up in. Um, but I would never describe myself as a devout person. We're just ordinary people. Um, He said, um, there's been a disaster. It's a disaster. And I thought there'd been a car accident. And it took me a while, because he was hysterical. Um, it took me a while to realize. He, he just said, Madeline's been abducted from her bed. Um, and I sort of said, no, Jerry, you know. And he, he was sort of at pains to emphasize how important it was because at this time I think they'd been looking for some time and they hadn't told us right away. They looked for an hour or so. She said, she's gone, Mum, she's gone, Mum. And, and I said, we'll get her back. And I was able to say this to Kate for quite a few months. We'll get her back, we'll get her back. And now I find it is getting harder to say that to her. Um, I, I, I believe it. We want her back. We're not going to accept that Maddie's gone from our, our life altogether. She's far too important for that. Kate phoned me um, about an hour after Jerry and asked me to get in touch with um, Paul Seddon, who is the priest, Father Seddon, who married her, who baptized Madeline. Um, and I didn't have his mobile phone, so I rang a friend of Kate's and, and got, got him, um, and he rang Kate right away. And I think as soon as this happened, as soon as Kate realized what had happened, it was as if um, she started to ask God right away to give her Madeline. Um, because Kate and Jerry were not the most devout family. We do have Catholic faith. Um, it, it's the religion that we were brought up in. Um, but I would never describe myself as a devout person. We're just ordinary people. Um, but Kate certainly has, has clung to her religion um, since this happened. Possibly she feels that, you know, it has to be a greater thing that helps us to get Madeline back, um, something with more power than... than ...to the airport and we, we flew over to Portugal. And Kate and Jerry, when we arrived at the apartment, were hysterical. Their voices were out of control. And I think it was just blind panic and fear that they couldn't get through to the police or to anybody 
um, to make it clear that they felt Madeline had been abducted and they were afraid that every minute that was lost was crucial to getting Madeline back. Um, my daughter is very, very placid, very even-tempered, and I saw her scream that night at the council, screaming for help, for somebody to do something to, to help them to get Madeline back. But I've never heard Kate raise her voice. She doesn't raise her voice. And she was shouting down the phone, I think, mm -hmm. to emphasize how important it was um, to the British consul. I want somebody here now, um, is what she was saying. But yes, emotionally, she was very up and down. Um, and that isn't, as I say, she's a very placid. Detrás de las palabras, hay señales que nadie puede esconder. A la pregunta de si supiera la verdad, lo ocultaría. Su parte izquierda en ese momento está como más cerrada. ¿Qué ocultan? A la pregunta de cuándo fue la última vez que hablaron, eh, Susan empieza como a tocar muy fuertemente la mano de su marido, que, que hasta ese momento no había hecho. Entonces me hace pensar algo, ¿qué pasa con esa pregunta? ¿Cómo se sienten de verdad? Hay algo que no acaba de, de estar en su sitio. Si pasa la mano por el cuello, hay algo extraño ahí. El testimonio de los abuelos de Madeleine, analizado por una experta en comunicación no verbal. 